guys it's christy welcome back to my channel um just wanted to come on here and do kylie rodney update it's not really much of an update just um today is two weeks since the party since she went missing and honestly we don't know any more than we knew from the beginning um I'm just going to throw a few things out here that I've come across in the past couple of days. Um, you see on the screen right now, this is a new poster that somebody put together that I think is really great because it has everything significant on it. Um, we've got the missing person poster up in the corner that has a picture of Kylie. It's got the surveillance picture of Kylie. It's got all the information. We have another picture of Kylie. We have the picture of her car. And the car information there's pictures of both hoodies so i thought this was a really good poster that they put together for us to use and that's why i featured it here today so got not really like detailed notes but just kind of bullet points of things that i wanted to touch on with you today um mainly i'm doing this video just to keep her name and her story out there um you know we do not want this to go cold we don't want this to be forgotten about sorry about the dogs um i just think it's important you know that people keep seeing these videos and understand that the 16 year old girl the 16 year old child is still out there alone somewhere missing and her vehicle is missing um i just want to keep awareness around this case so i will keep posting um i haven't been posting every day about it because there really haven't been any updates and some of what we're going to go over today is the reason why there really haven't been any updates so let's start out um this poster down for a minute and let's go to so yesterday placer county made this post i'm gonna make it a little bigger for you it's hard for me to see so um It's Placer County Sheriff's Office. It says, we'd like to thank the Tahoe Truckee community and the public for their cooperation and support as we continue to search and investigate 16-year-old Kylie Rodney's disappearance. Over the past several days, we have received duplicate tips from citizens and it has slowed our detectives down from pursuing credible leads. As many as, as many of you can imagine, our detectives and staff are working around the clock to vet and investigate every lead that comes in. Be rest assured, if you have submitted your tip using one of the methods below, we have received it. Our staff may not return your message or call due to the number of tips we receive each day. Our priority is to bring Kylie home to her family. We'd like to remind everyone to please submit their tip once using one of the methods below. And then they list all the different ways that you can submit the tips, the photos, the videos, etc. Um, and then here it is talking about. I just messed something up there. Not for you guys, but for me, this just tells you um, the search for Kylie Rodney. Please do not send duplicate tips. And then again, they go over the ways that you can submit your tips one time. And I have seen quite a few people on social media saying, <clears throat> excuse me, saying that they submitted a tip and they didn't hear back well you may not hear back because they're getting so many tips 
So if you don't hear back, it doesn't necessarily mean that they did not get your tip. Um, I know that's frustrating and you want to make sure that your information is getting to them, but sending it over and over and over again is just slowing them down in what is now being referred to as a stalled investigation. So let's get on with that. So in the New York Post, there was this article and it says, many party goers who were with Kylie Rodney the night she vanished are refusing to cooperate with investigators because they're afraid they could get charged over illegal activity and then kicked out of college. People aren't talking to us, Placer County Sheriff's Office Public Information Officer Angela Musalem told the Post Thursday, adding that although some have come forward, many are staying silent. And then the article goes on to say, on Wednesday, there were 91 detectives and investigators on the case. Thursday's numbers are expected to be similar. The focus is on door knocking party goers to collect more information about how Kylie left the party. Police have not yet settled on a theory about how Kylie disappeared. All scenarios are still on the table because we don't know what happened to Kylie. Volunteers from high school students to ski patrol and soccer moms are searching by foot, dirt bike, or pickup truck and logging their search, logging their search grid on backcountry mapping tool Cal Topo. So this is frustrating news. Um, not entirely surprising, um, given my commenter saying that, you know, these kids need to keep their mouth shut. That's, that seems to be what's happening. Um, I don't know if this is at the direction of the parents. I don't know if it is simply fear on these kids part about college, um, about you know getting in trouble but they have made it so simple to submit tips anonymously and i think that's what frustrates me the most is if you're afraid of being in trouble they've made it to where you can submit your tip anonymously they won't even know who you are and if they don't know who you are then they can't charge you right so the fact that this investigation is two weeks old and it is stalled is is very disappointing. It is frustrating. Um, I don't like hearing that at all. And when Sammy came out that she was doing, you know, her team meetup meetings, um, you know, part of me thought that's kind of weird. And part of me was like, well, maybe this will work. Maybe somebody will actually go to these meetings and say something. But apparently these teens aren't coming forward. So that accomplished nothing, which makes me go back to, hey, these are kind of weird. You know, she's telling the parents, like, you can drop your kids off, but then you need to, like, immediately drive away and go far so they can't see you and you can't see them. And, um... You know, there were going to be no adults there, no police, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, there's, there's, when you get to this point in a case where there's no movement, you've got people who were there, but they're not cooperating. Your mind just starts to do its thing. And, you know, were these meetings set up to have people come from the party? So Sammy and her squad could be like, hey, be quiet. Don't say anything, you know, and I've been wondering about a second party, you know, when everybody left, did they go to a second party? Was it like, hey, don't say anything about the second party or, you know, what happened in those team meetings? We'll never know. Um, you know, it was it a, a hush meeting, you know, a keep your mouth shut or else kind of meeting or or what, you know, and then we're depending on Sammy and her squad to give these tips to the cops, which obviously they didn't do because the cops have no information. So, 
if you're out there and you're a teen or you're a parent of one of the teens that were there, if you're, you know, the cool aunt or uncle of one of these teens that were at the party and they'll talk to you, get this information. 16 year old girl depends on it. Her family is depending on somebody coming forward and just telling what happened. And if, nothing happened at this party if it was just an accident and she drove off and she had a wreck and they just haven't found the car yet then what do you have to be quiet about what are you covering up the police already know that there was underage drinking they already know that there were drugs there that's not what they're looking for they don't want to hear about the drugs and the drinking you know, they really want to hear about when Kylie was there, who was Kylie with, and when did she leave, and who did she leave with. Nobody has said that they saw this girl leave the party, and it's just weird. I mean, police have confirmed that there were two or three hundred people there, but, you know, was it all at one time? Was it like two or three hundred people in and out? I don't know, but... Even if you had 50 people there, somebody had to see her leave and they're not talking. Why aren't they talking? What are they hiding? So that's my rant for the day, I guess. But it's just frustrating that people aren't coming forward. And I feel like it's probably the adults that are preventing them from coming forward because they're so worried about their kids, their kids' future. And what about Kylie? What about Kylie's future? Think about that. What if it was your kid? That was in this situation wouldn't you want kylie to come forward would you care at all about kylie's future plans no you wouldn't you would want information that leads to bringing your child home so whatever's going on out there it needs to stop and people need to start talking we cannot let this just be stalled so like i said that's that's my rant i guess for the day um next thing that was big yesterday was dog the bounty hunter it has been getting tips about the kylie rodney case um he's a bounty hunter and you know there's not a bounty for anybody yet um but my thinking is that okay people aren't talking to the police and a lot of times people will talk to somebody else like a dog, the bounty hunter, um, a private investigator, you know, whatever. Sometimes for whatever reason, people feel more comfortable talking to somebody like that. So for whatever reason, dog is getting tips and everybody is wondering if he's going to go out there and get involved. And he says that he's kind of wary of getting involved because of what happened with the Gabby Petito, Brian Laundry situation. Now, if you followed that case, which I'm sure you probably did, it was huge last year, um, oddly enough, right about this time last year, Dog joined in trying to find Brian Laundry. It was because of Dog that we found out about the little laundry camping trip out to Fort DeSoto or whatever it was called. Um, and if you remember, Dog went up and he actually went up and like banged on the laundry's door trying to talk to them. Now, as far as Dog goes, um, a lot of people like him. A lot of people don't like him. But the way I look at it is... It brings more attention to the case. That's always a good thing. It keeps it out there. It keeps it in the news. Um, so whether he gets involved or not kind of remains to be seen. But this was a big story and it brought up Kylie's case. So in my opinion, that's a good thing. But let's see what Dog said. So, he's reportedly getting tips about the disappearance of California teen Kylie Rodney, but is wary of joining the search because of the flack he got while trying to find Gabby Petito and her killer boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. 
Since then, dog, real name Dwayne Chapman, has decided to wait until he gets an invite from either cops or the missing person's family, or if the case goes beyond 21 days, when such cases typically go cold, his rep said. So the 21 days would be next weekend for Kylie. And I guess at that point, maybe he will consider getting involved or if the police or Kylie's family contact him, then I guess maybe he will. So that was kind of a big thing yesterday. Um, Sacramento has come up a lot in the conversations around this case. Um, there was a post by the Sacramento Police Department and it says, Media Advisory News Release, Numerous Arrests Made in Multi-Agency Human Trafficking Operation. During the first two weeks of August, detectives from the Sacramento Police Department's Human Trafficking Unit participated in the FBI Operation Cross Country. This operation was a collaborative effort spanning multiple agencies and jurisdictions across the country with the goal of combating juvenile sex trafficking. So that's a scary thought. Um, I'm sure that it has crossed a lot of our minds, you know, was she abducted and is she being trafficked? And Lord, I hope not. But um, I mean, the only, if there's an upside, the only upside to that is that she could be out there alive somewhere. Um, the FBI is doing this huge operation um, they actually found, I believe it was 142 kids that had been trafficked across the country and quite a few adults as well. So whatever they're out there doing is working. So hopefully if this is a trafficking situation, maybe, maybe we can find Kylie. I just thought I would throw that in there because, like I said, Sacramento comes up a lot and then they posted this. So, like I said, there, there's so little out there that I'm just kind of giving you a glimpse of what I do when I'm following a case. And this is the stuff that I have been finding. So, on Twitter... This guy, he is a private investigator, and on Twitter, it's SF Investigates, as you can see, and he is out there right now searching for Kylie. And this post says, heading out for another day of searching for Kylie Rodney, I am going to focus on the ponds around the residence today and high country roads if she took a back route to avoid cops. If anyone sees routes that look remote and promising, not super residential, I'm open to ideas. So we need more of this. We need more people like this that will just, you know, I forget. It was several hours drive, I think, for him. Um, but they're out there, you know, boots on the ground looking for this girl and doing a really good job. And if you're a local and you have some ideas of maybe a route that she would have taken, like you said, you know, possibly to avoid the cops because she had been drinking, um, go ahead and send him a message or leave him a comment and he will check it out. He also posted this, which is kind of heartbreaking, to be honest. It says, if anyone was at the party Kylie Rodney went missing from and is willing to talk to me or know someone that is, I will honor your anonymity. I spoke with Kylie's grandfather for 90 minutes today. This man is getting no answers. Help me give him some answers. And like I said, he is a private investigator, so he doesn't have ties to law enforcement in that area or anything. Um... And sometimes people feel more comfortable talking to them. They'll tell them things that they would not tell law enforcement because there's not the, the whole um, threat hanging over their head of charges being filed and what have you. So if you were there or you know someone was there, someone told you they were there, they told you some kind of significant information, again, 
send him a message or a comment and and let him know i mean you know we've got even her poor grandfather now you know the grandfather really believes if we can find the car that's going to hold the answer to what happened to kylie so even if you know where her vehicle might be or if you saw her vehicle leaving anything just go ahead and if you don't feel comfortable with the anonymous tip lines and everything that are available to you there are other people you can reach out to just like this guy and get the information to the people who need it so i just wanted to kind of bring that up um and then jagger awesome i know i was kind of hard on jagger at first but this guy i feel like he's really going through it um he posted this and it says this girl is my entire world i need your help to bring her home please there is no punishment you will get seventy five thousand dollars and a hellcat whether you have her or just know where she is anything you know helps please i know what you all would do if this was someone you loved and i mean he's right if it was someone that they loved they wouldn't want people being silent and all these people are being silent so you know we've got even jagger out here that you know he's basically just begging for anybody to to come forward and help and then he posted this it says show yourself quit hiding take the money and the hellcat and be fucking happy quit making others suffer for your benefit help us bring kylie home i'm fucking sick of this 75k and a hellcat with no punishment imagine this was someone you love and i feel like my boy jagger here he he's getting pissed just like the rest of us you know maybe maybe jagger needs to just go start kicking some ass i don't know i feel like at this point it's going to be ryan up church or sf investigates or jagger and he said he would do it but one of them is going to solve this one of them is going to be the one that find her at this point i mean it's it's just it's it's that crazy if no one's talking to the cops you know talk to to upchurch talk to jagger talk, talk to dog sf investigates whoever but somebody talk okay my last video where i went on a rant did really well so maybe this one will too i don't know all right and then this one from jagger it says i know if this was your girl sorry i cannot read this you would get my old person glasses here I know if this was your girl, you would want whoever ducked with her to bring her home. Please just be real and end this. That's all I ask. I just want to hug her again. So many people miss the living shit out of this girl and are absolutely terrified. We all just want her home. We all just want our Kylie back. If you are too scared to talk to cops, then talk to me first. I'll listen. Just be real. That's all I ask. So... You know, Jagger's out here doing what he can. Jagger's trying to get information. Um, you know, I I feel like, you know, this kid really, really cares about her. And whether they're dating now or they're not, you can tell that they're obviously still close. Um, like I've mentioned before, he's close with her family. And she obviously means the world to him. Um, and then Kate, who was in... The interview with Jagger that I said, you know, I I believe that they are close friends because, you know, I've actually seen pictures of Kate and Kylie and I haven't seen pictures of Kate and or Kylie and Sammy or, you know, anything like that. And it's just weird that these people are like, oh, yeah, we're super close and we're such good friends and blah, blah, blah. And we don't follow each other on social media and there's no pictures of us. But, yeah, we're super close anyway so a picture came out of kylie 
wearing the odd future hoodie that police seemed to think she was wearing at the party. And this was from, I want to say about a month ago. She was at a restaurant that I think they called Burger Me. I don't know what that is. They don't have those here. We just have, you know, Whataburger. Um, but yeah, this picture comes out. And so it's cropped, obviously. And then if you go looking for it, you can find the uncropped picture. And look, it's Kate. And I don't know, could that be Mags back there? Possibly, maybe. It could be. But it's Kate that posted it. So, again, you know, to me, this is proof that these people actually have a relationship. They actually are friends. They actually spend time together. Oh, so, let's see what we got next. So, these stats are from yesterday. Um, every day, Placer County has been updating on Instagram, you know, what's going on out there. Like, you know, you'll see like 91, 91 people. They always put up like how many leads that they've gotten, things like that. There was a dive team out there. Um, like I said, this is, this is accurate as of yesterday. They had not posted anything for today before I recorded this video. Um, I looked up because I, I still believe the iPhone is in the water. Um, Apple said that Apple's iPhone 12 and iPhone 13 lineups feature the best water resistance rating on an iPhone to date with an IP68 rating. This means that the devices can withstand water up to a depth of 6 meters, 19.7 feet, for up to 30 minutes. So a lot of people were like, you know, when her phone shut off at 1233, they were thinking, oh, well, somebody tossed it in the water and it went off. Well, if the phone wasn't manually turned off, from what I get out of this information, it actually could have stayed on for 30 minutes. So if we go with that thinking, um, her last on the iPhone, her last location update that her mom got was at 12.03, I believe, which is 30 minutes before the phone shut off. So at 12.03, did somebody throw the phone in the water? And then after 30 minutes, the phone shut off. I don't know. Speculation. But that was just kind of what I was thinking with the times, you know, the 12.03, the 12.33. And then I read this and it said 30 minutes. So it just kind of got my mind going. You know, maybe somebody tossed that phone at midnight. And then after 30 minutes of being in the water, it shut down. Side, you're getting a glimpse inside my head right now. What I do and where my mind goes. Um, highway cameras are something that I've brought up quite a few times. Um, here is a little snippet of a map that shows different places that there would be cameras on the highway. Um, I think they are mostly at exit points from what I gather, but there were cameras along the highway, which I'm sure that the investigators have poured through, but that was one of my big questions. And obviously, if she wasn't on the highway and she was taking back roads um, to avoid the cops or whatever, or maybe it's just a quicker way home, then none of this really matters. But again, thought I'd put it out there. Um. Okay, so here's kind of, like I said, you know, we've got kind of a timeline um you know this is all the the big points uh you know we had elsa come out saying that she saw her at midnight and then the 1203 was the last location share with the mom 
12.33, the phone goes off. 12.30, Snapchat still showed it in the same place as the location that the mom had got, which was at the campground, which at the presser, they said, was as much in the water as out of the water. Um, but from what I understand, when you do the find my iPhone, um, it isn't always super like pinpoint accurate. It can give you kind of a wider area. So it may be showing, you know, a part of the circle is in the water and part of the circle is on the land. Um, like I said, I, I still feel like that phone is in the water and I feel like that's what they've been having those swimmers look for. Uh, got... so this is drone footage there's there's no sound um this was drone footage and it's taken by sf investigates who i talked about before from twitter um while he is out there looking for kylie and as you can see this water is like glass, you know, there's not like rippling, um, anything like that. And not, it's not just like glass. It's like a mirror because you can see the reflection of the sky and the clouds and the water, um, to the point, like there's certain points in this drone footage that I literally have to remind myself that, you know, I'm looking at water. I'm not looking at the sky. Um, there have been people that have watched this that are convinced that they see the car in the water. I've watched it, and I mean, your eyes can play tricks on you. And then especially if, you know, somebody puts that suggestion in your head, like, go to this point in the video and look at this. And, you know, you can almost convince yourself that, yeah, there's something there. I I can't see it because the reflection of the sky and the clouds to me kind of distorts you know what am i actually seeing in the water is it in the water or is that a reflection from the sky so i don't know but i thought you know this is such good clear footage that he got out there i wanted to share it with you in case by some chance you haven't seen it maybe you already have um and then while that's playing we can talk about um so a little bit more with the timeline. So the nearby camper said at 930, they saw the train of cars going into the party. And then Sammy said that the party blew up at like 10 or 1030. And when you think about that, the camper, they mentioned 930, they saw all these cars go in and 1230, they saw all these cars go out. So if the party blew up at 10 or 10.30, how come the camper didn't notice like a big inflow of cars at that time? How is this party blowing up, but nobody's arriving like in significant enough numbers that it drew the attention of the nearby camper? So I just thought that was kind of weird. Um, like I said, you know, 9 30 they they noticed a lot of people going out there 12 30 they noticed a lot of people leaving sammy says it blew up at like 10 or 10 30 but that person didn't notice anything that really drew their attention at that time so i just find it kind of odd that that's when it blew up and there wasn't a significant traffic flow into that area um Adventures with Purpose, they should be arriving today. Um, I think they said it would be in the evening, so I would not expect that they're probably going to get in the water today. It would probably be tomorrow. Um, my guess is that, you know, they'll get up and get an early start in the morning. There is a lot of water out there to check. I, I'm guessing they're probably going to start with Crosser Lake, which is what we have been looking at. Um, since that is the closest, that's where the swimmers were looking for the phone. Um, I feel like that's probably going to be where they begin. And I hope they can find the phone. 
Um, I hope if they find the car that Kylie isn't in the car. I hope they can find something. Some little something that maybe will start this investigation moving along again. Um, her phone is out there. There's a reason. So finding that phone be very important. Um, I said it before. I'll say it again. They are great at what they do. So once they have been in that water and they tell me there's nothing there, I will believe there is nothing in that water. So good luck to Adventures with Purpose. Whether that means you find something or not, even not finding something, honestly, is progress at this time because then we know we can mark that off. She's not there. So super exciting that they're going to be there. It's kind of like everything else, you know, with dog and all of this. It brings more attention to the case and it gets more eyes on the case. But they are so good at what they do. And it's really an asset to the investigation to have them there. So that is really exciting. They should be there this evening. And like I said, I would expect they will probably hit the water tomorrow. Um, another thing that Sammy said that's kind of been sticking in my head, when she did the interview with um, American Dream Chasers on Facebook, she talked, um, remember he was asking about Kylie's car. Was there anything significant with Kylie's car um you know that we should be looking for she brought up that there was the ram sticker which is actually she said a bull it's actually a ram um it's up here and she got really excited and said yeah it has a sunroof does it have a sunroof because the police and Kylie's mom have not said that it has a sunroof. As a matter of fact, they pointed out that you can kind of see it in this picture that it had bars like a rack on the top, not a sunroof. But Sammy was convinced that it had a sunroof and she didn't mention the rack. And I feel like if it had a sunroof, that would be a detail that her mom and the police would have given us because they have given us everything else. You know, they told us about the sticker. You know, and they told us about the bars and the rack thing on the top, but they didn't say sunroof. So I don't, I really, I don't think Sammy knows what the hell she's talking about. Um, how do I, uh, so there's been these weird, weird messages. Um, here's kind of a, somebody grouped them all together in one spot. But this person has been messaging the mom, well, to Lost Trail Lodge, which is the business that they own. And I am pretty sure the mom is running that Instagram. But they they send these messages and it's like, reply to my message. And this one, have information about your daughter. Send a DM. <clears throat> Check the messages I sent you. I have some good information. Send a DM. And I'm like, what in the heck? If you have information, number one, why aren't you calling the police? Why aren't you turning this great information that you have about Kylie into the police? And why are you trying to get the mom to message you? So I did what I do. Of course, I checked out who the heck is this person. And you can see they have zero post. So did they make this account just to harass the mom or what? And then I looked and, you know, one of the people that they're following, of course, is Lost Trail Lodge. Um, you know, I didn't find any connections with anybody else like Sammy or mags or whoever but lost trail lodge is there and like i said they have this account that they haven't made me post so what is up with that who is this person and have you talked to the police 
so that and then um this this post um kind of got everybody's attention so on the placer county page this lady says was there a black bmw at the party with heavily tinted windows and it got placer county's attention very quickly and they said where did you hear that and then she says she will call them so i hope that she did call them i don't know uh who this black bmw person is um and why it seems significant to this person but it did so hopefully it does have some bearing on the case and they got a hold of placer county and they are checking that out so that's really it really it and that that is disappointing to say after two weeks i was hoping by this point it would be cleared up or you know we would be further along we'd have more to go on but there's just nothing and that's because the people aren't talking um you know they they did that article and they said like they're not cooperating they're not coming forward and this has stalled the investigation and we can't let this happen we can't let it stall um we need to bring her home one way or the other uh i don't want to lose hope that she's out there somewhere but the more days that pass you know the scarier the places your mind go and i'm sure unfortunately you know even her family is having these thoughts creep in every now and then and that's awful for any parent to ever have to even consider that something happened to your child and that they could be out there somewhere and i just want her home like i said one way or the other her family deserves answers her her mom her dad her grandpa they all deserve answers so please um you know as always i will link the link tree for placer county which has all the different ways you can submit your tips. You can call them in, you can email them in, or you can use the anonymous portal, which, you know, if people really are afraid about this affecting their future, then the anonymous portal is the way to go. And there's no excuse not to use the anonymous portal. Um, hopefully these people will start talking. I feel like this has got to be weighing on these kids that were there if they know something and hopefully soon one of them will break hopefully you know it's going to get to be too much and they're going to spill it's just going to all spill out and that's what we need um keep praying for for kylie keep praying for her family the searchers the investigators pray for them that they get a break or a leave that will turn this thing around um, you know, we pray that Adventures with Purpose find something, uh, you know, at this point, even if we could find her car, it would be huge. So, that's it, guys. Um, sorry, I had another little rant there, but, you know, yeah, I'm frustrated. And it, it really, it really makes me mad that these people are encouraging their kids not to talk. So... Thank you for stopping by and spending part of your day with me to continue to talk about Kylie, to get her story out there. Um, give it a thumbs up to boost it in the algorithm so Kylie's story doesn't get lost, so more people can see this video. Uh, share it on your social media with hashtag find, find Kylie. Um, you know, together, maybe we can bring this girl home. Uh, welcome all my new subscribers. I love all of you guys. Keep your comments coming. They're great. Um, they get me thinking and I like hearing what you're thinking. So like I said, thank you for coming by and spending part of your day with me to talk about Kylie. And as always, I will see you in the next one.